Hey H&K fans, James here with another video for you. This morning I thought I would talk to you about the VP9 match. It's the latest in H&K's VP series and one that surprisingly has taken quite a while to make it into my own collection, but I have one here now and I thought I would take this opportunity to showcase what it is, what it isn't, and as you will see, what it will become. So, without further ado, once you find yourself a comfy place to sit, grab yourself a tasty beverage, and follow me around the workbench, we'll dive right in. Okay guys, so here it is. This is the VP9 match. Uh, those of you who are not familiar with this, you might look at this and say, well James, that just looks like a VP9 with a really long slide and barrel with some cuts all, all made in it. Um, and well, at first glance, you'd probably be right with that statement. Uh, the match uh, naming convention, as most H&K fans will remember, uh, dates back to the mid-1990s and the USP match, which most people uh, became aware of with the Lara Croft Tomb Raider uh, movies where uh, she used those weapons, actually a pair of them, and it was a USP that had an additional uh, match weight compensated um, into the pistol with a longer barrel and some target sights, and it was intended for the competition market. Uh, a very successful pistol, very desirable pistol now in collectors because they didn't make as many of them um, as they did some of the other uh, runs, the USP series. Um, but we saw a gap in that type of pistol within H&K's product catalog for several years. Um, skipped over the P2000 and the HK45 series, and then when we get the P30, we get a long slide variant, but it's it's not, you know, really competition focused. Um, and then when we get to the VP9, we get a long slide variant as well that is a little bit more of a of a uh, reach into the competition market. But then um, a few years ago now, they come up with the release of the VP9 match, and that pistol obviously is, is more optimized for it, or I should say the German variant. Um, as most people know, uh, in Germany, they don't have the VP9, they have the SFP9, so the Striker Fired Pistol 9. It's slightly more than a naming convention change, um, but that's what it is. And um, that's where I first saw this pistol. It was on their website, they were doing some press release stuff as the SFP9 match. Fast forward, uh, I guess about a month or so after that, um, we get to be invited down to uh, Florida for uh, a private event that H&K was hosting. I was invited to um, provide uh, a training block in that, and they did a soft release on the VP9 match. That was my first time to get my hands on it, and what I and the other guys quickly realized were there were some features that were absent on the VP9 match um, that we had seen in the release of the SFP9 match. And that was a little bit disheartening um, for that, that reason. Um, and I think that, not having those key features, and the fact that, you know, I, I just don't do a whole lot of competition work uh, these days, prevented me from adding that pistol to my collection at that time. Um, and I've kind of brooded over this uh, over the years since then, about do I want to have this? If I do, how do I want to set it up? And it wasn't until this past summer we were over, I uh, got invited over to Germany, spent a whole week with H&K as we were doing research and photography and video work for the uh, Vickers Guide uh, book series that uh, we're working on that I got to really get my hands on the German model, the SFP9 match, and really could see and feel the differences between the U.S. spec on that one, and so the hunt began to uh, to build this thing out the way I wanted. So <clears throat> we'll showcase here what the pistol uh, features here in the U.S. model, and then what are the differences um, that I have procured in order to create um, the spec from Germany, and then a couple other add-ons to really make this uh, build my own um, and exactly the way I want it. So let's take a look at that first. Um, what do we see from uh, the VP9 match? Well, it's optics ready, which all our newer models are. So you have a removable plate here at the top that 
Uh, if you wanted to leave it and just use iron sights, you could, or you can remove those screws and then uh, get yourself a mounting plate. <clears throat> they make different mounting plates for different uh, type optics and get the red dot optic of your choice and then go ahead and mount that up there. Uh, it comes standard with their uh, you know, low profile luminous uh, dot sights, um, but you can obviously swap those out to, uh, to any model you want. And then you have the longer slide with a longer barrel and a different recoil spring assembly. This is obviously gonna give you uh, greater potential accuracy and velocity and with the extra weight, the different recoil system um, and all the, uh, the cuts and whatnot, you should have uh, better recoil management making uh, your shots um, um, quicker in between your splits. Um, what you probably won't see very clearly here, but we will see when we take it apart, it has a, uh, a coated uh, firing pin and a different firing pin spring on there as well. Um, but that's where the features kind of end from the Eurospec. Oh, and then the magazines. It comes with uh, these new uh, 20 round magazines with this larger base plate uh, extension that kind of fills the width of the grip. Obviously, you'd have to be a really big dude to have your hand down here on the bottom, um, but it fills that out. So that's your your VP9 match in itself a very capable weapon. But what the Eurospec one comes with? Well, first of all, it comes with this really neat jet funnel type uh, magazine well. This one is actually made out of polymer. It's got the H and K logo on either side. And because of that, once you mount that in the gun, this larger extension on the, uh, the base plate won't fit around the dimensions there. So it comes with a different 20 round mag. It's still the same magazine, but you can see they've minimized the extension there and that allows it to fit around the magazine well. So having these magazines is a requirement if you have this magazine well. Uh, then it has a match grade uh, trigger return spring and sear spring. Acquired those, we're gonna add those in, and it has a nickel coated trigger bar. This is a key component as well, reduces the, uh, the friction um, on, uh, on the movement between the trigger, the trigger bar, and the sear actuator latch. Those components together will give you the same key features that you have on the SFP9 match. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead and disassemble my new VP9 match. We'll showcase where all those parts are that we're gonna take out, um, and then we'll put them all in together. Okay, so now we've got everything disassembled. This gives us an opportunity to look at um, some of those key features. First thing I'll showcase is this is the striker assembly or firing pin assembly that comes in your VP9 match. As you can see, it is a nickel coated um, and it has this blue paint on your uh, firing pin spring. So this lets you know it's a different weight spring as well. So that comes in your uh, VP9 match. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to take this nickel coated trigger bar and we're going to replace it from the standard model that's already in your pistol. Also, we're going to take the standard VP9 weighted trigger turn spring and replace it with the match variant. And then we are going to take your sear spring, which you can see still attached here on the pistol or the part, and we're going to replace it with the match weight. That may not look like much of a difference in springs, but the one there on the left, the match one, is actually lighter in its rebound pressure capability. And then lastly, for the full VP9 match build, we're going to install the jet funnel. What you'll notice here is there is a hole here at the rear in this vertical position. And then there's another hole here. This one goes horizontally through there. This one's vertically from bottom to top. Okay, well, 
that corresponds with your uh, receiver. You have the hole here at the bottom rear of the magazine well that holds in the uh, uh, the axle pin. This pin obviously holds your back strap and your side panels in place. It also serves the dual role as a lanyard loop. We're gonna drift that out and then slide this in position and that same pin will now hold the rear of that in. Now, at the front, you will notice on my VP9 match that I have a drilled and tapped hole here at the front of the magazine well. This is a new modification that uh, Germany is doing to the SFP line, the VP9 line, obviously, so you can mount this thing. If you have an earlier VP9, you will notice that that is not there. So if you were able to procure one of these mag wells and you were trying to mount it onto one of these, you would have to figure out how to mount that. But the newer models, they all come with it. That makes this job much easier. And with that, we are going to take the mounting screw and its little sleeve and mount those vertically from the bottom out through the top into the bottom of the receiver to mount that. So let's get all that done as well as work on what I'm gonna do with the top of the slide and we'll show you how it all turns out. Okay, here we are. Here's the finished product. And I gotta say, I'm really happy with how this turned out. Um, really, really happy with it. So let's obviously uh, talk about some of the other features that are on here. First of all, you can see that I have removed the original low profile sites and put on these taller suppressor height sites, got blacked out rear in the front, uh, I'm sorry, in the back, tritium in the front. Uh, you know, I know some guys who will uh, mount an optic on their pistol and they'll leave the standard sights saying they don't want that. Uh, I'm a huge believer through, you know, the training that I that I do that um, you need to be able to have a set of backup sights. Uh, I've worked with red dots enough. I've seen enough students with them that the likelihood that something is going to uh, not work properly uh, with that, you're going to have some kind of failure point uh, is pretty high. Um, and if you don't have sights that you can see with your optic on there, well, then you're just point shooting. Some guys will complain and say, well, it, it gets in my field of view. I think you'll see with the large um, window I have here, the sights are not, you know, obtrusive at all. They're right there at the bottom. They're, um, they're not obstructing my view anyway, but if I need them, they're there. Um, and then also I've heard guys say, oh, I wouldn't put tritium on there because it's going to you know, it's going to get in the way and it's going to, you know, cause me not to be able to see my red dot. I can see my red dot just fine through there. Having the tritium just as an additional comfort level. So again, if the gun went down in a low light, no light condition, I have that. So really happy with that. Also, obviously for the size of this pistol, an SRO is a great option. Good field of view uh, through there. Looks really good. And then you can see I've mounted an X300 here on the front. Um, you know, this one is, again, I don't do competition anymore these days, but I do a lot of training in the classes that I take and the classes that I teach. And I really um, like to have a weapon mounted light if, um, if it suits it. The X300 has been an industry leader for years, but the problem I usually see with X300s on guns for guys when they uh, run them is you end up having a gun and a VP9 standard size is a duty size weapon. It's a full size gun. You put an X300 on here, look at all that real estate that's been taken up in the front. No longer is this gun compact in any way. And I'm, I'm not taking advantage of this extra space here. Um, well, now with a VP9 match, I can do that. Um, I've got a longer slide. I've got a longer barrel. Um, and this thing is you know, pretty much flush fit at that point. So that and the fact that this is actually the turbo model means that I'm going to be able to, to get some extra projection and, uh, and power out at greater distances, which is where I really want to utilize a, a pistol like this. So anyway, super happy. But of course, what do you think about the performance upgrades in there? I, I know it's difficult for me to showcase this on a video, but... I mean, I'm on the wall right here, right up the wall here. I barely press on this and it drops. It is so smooth now with the, uh, with the trigger pull. I mean, it is just buttery smooth and light. Um, this is going to be a lot of fun. Can't wait to get it to the range.
Okay, I hope you enjoyed the video and a quick look at my specific VP9 match. As always, if you are in need of H&K service and support or unique training opportunities, give me a shout. That's what I'm here for. Thank you, guys.